I don't know what else. Like, if somebody is going through something like that, and you can do something to share their story, like for me, it's just imperative. I just don't see any any other way. You know, I I, I read about you after I met you. I read it, and I thought, no, some people need to know what 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 the stupid shit that's going on. They just have to know. Like, we can't just keep hoping that something will happen. Like, people need right. to jump in and help out I right. just, that I really do like I feel like so many of us and so many of you are just swimming against the current and 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 finding yourselves just lonely in the process yeah oh it's a very lonely process I won't even you know I suffer from complex post-traumatic stress and what that is is it's compounded trauma and it's prolonged trauma so you know and for me the reason why you know what my leadership did to me and, you know, just to refresh, you know, I had overcome so much in my life. You know, what they did to me is not a big surprise. I mean, that shit happens all the time, Mm -hmm. but it was how hard I worked to get to where I was, you know, all of the shit that I had overcome in my life, my childhood trauma, you know, Uh being trafficked, you know, just everything that I had overcome. And I had made something of myself only for my leadership to fucking destroy me yeah and that shit hurt man that shit hurt more than any heartbreak I've ever had that shit hurt so bad because I trusted these people Mm -hmm. I trusted them I respected them and they could give two fucks about me or my children because remember I had three small children my oldest my daughter was uh, my daughter Jaden was eight years old and my Uh twins were three years old Mm-hmm. And when I lost, when I, um, when I lost my job, I, you know, I went into extreme financial hardship. Mm-hmm. So on top of the mental breakdown that I had, now I have financial, just, you know, financial struggles. Mm-hmm. I've got young children. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find a re, you know, find, well, now what do I do? Cause I had yeah. no plan because I had no Don't plans of leaving. And you don't have family. I mean, there's no family. And I don't have family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I didn't have a backup plan. You didn't have a backup plan. There's no family. There's nowhere to go. They, you know, they dismissed you. You lost your job. You're in financial burden. Did you reach out to any of the other um, military I've, personnel that you worked with that were, your, that were confidants, maybe mentors? In, did anyone try to help? My My unit commander did. My unit commander did try to help, and he was shut down. He was basically told to shut up in color. Wow. And um, because it's a hierarchy, right? I mean, you mm-hmm. just have to follow the hierarchy. And if it's not. Right. But here's the thing, Alicia, I filed a 10 page congressional letter. Uh huh. I wrote my congresswoman 10 pages of everything in detail of what was going on. OK, along with 30 pages of evidence and supporting documents. Um, I also sent that same information to the Department of Defense IG, and it took 934 days to complete my investigation, okay? That was complete fucking bullshit, Mm -hmm. okay? Because here's the thing. If senior leaders and general officers are allowed to lie, Mm -hmm. then nobody is safe. Then what the fuck is the point of the IG? You know what I'm saying? Because the IG is going to take the word of a general officer over... An enlisted soldier, the especially IG, me, IG National stands for Guard. What? Remind me, IG stands for what? So it's the um, the Department of Defense IG office is here. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually read you the whole official title because remember I filed the DoD IG, which is Inspector General, Inspector um, General. whistle whistleblower complaint. Okay? okay, which you have protections, right? Supposedly, I'm supposed to. Yeah, you're supposed We're to. We're supposed to. Yeah, right, yes. right, right. Okay, gotcha. Anyway, but like if you go to um, DOD IG whistleblower complaint, mm-hmm. it, it literally breaks down like, okay, once you file this complaint, you are not to be reassigned, removed, or, or, or relieved, okay? Mm-hmm. I was yeah. reassigned and then relieved. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be referred for mental health referral. I was referred for a mental health referral. 
And then I, it was determined that I was unfit for duty because I was experiencing suicidal ideation. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing is they're not supposed to start a retaliatory investigation against you. They absolutely did that. Mm-hmm. They tore into my personal life. Like, I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. And it was, it was, it was, it was Crystal, who is they, who is they, when you they? say they tore into your life, who is they? Um, my senior leadership. Okay. Senior leaders in my state. So we're talking the IG, my, the state IG. Uh-huh. Who had an obligation to do an investigation, but what he did is he just helped cover the whole shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, the chief of staff, the joint chief of staff. In fact, the I was relieved by a female officer, and that shit was like wow. Especially after I told her everything that was going on, mm-hmm. and then she was the one to relieve me. I was like, wow, wow. the goal. Oh yeah, that's like a. That's not getting stabbed in the back. That's them fucking just straight, straight stabbing you in the face. Yeah. And that, like, I'm telling you, man, like, the and trail all, like that is, you just, and you don't all of these consequences, that. Crystal, all of this consequence because you submitted a complaint on the daughter of a three star general. Yes. Are you fucking serious right now? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I tell what? people all the time, I'm like, I in lost my whole career hell. because, yeah. I lost my entire career because I got put in charge of a general's daughter and apparently and she didn't do her a, job and your job as her boss was to make sure she did it. And when she didn't, you submitted something, you know, that said she's not doing her job. You're the one that gets retaliated because she's the daughter of a three-star general. Right. And here's the thing. If, Holy if she shit. was, if she was anybody else, we would not be having this conversation. I would not be talking to you about how I almost died and my whole career ended. No, I would be at 25 years of service right now. I would be a command sergeant major doing some pretty fucking phenomenal things for my state Mm -hmm. and for the organization. Mm -hmm. But instead, yes, she made a phone call and my life just went to shit. (laughs) And it took me a really long time. So she, how did she, how did she find out that you submitted that? Because they contacted her, they contacted they, the, oh, IG, you know, the, okay. uh, you know, the, the, and um, they said you're, you know, your you boss. know, Sergeant Romero filed oh. a complaint against oh. you. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And she was just like, all right, I'm just gonna call my dad, and that's and what so she did. Daddy took care of ba- of his baby girl. Yes. And... and you know what? And I thought about this. Like I thought about this, right? Because um, I have three daughters. I have three daughters. You know, I, I, I've had a lot of time to think about this. Okay. Mm-hmm. And. I thought, you know what, if, if, if the situation like that, if it was, it was, if it was me, okay, mm-hmm. if I, if I, um, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur now. So me as the CEO, what if I, you know, my daughter just turned 21 and I bring her on as, you know, the COO of my company. Mm-hmm. And I find out that my daughter is, you know, abusing her privilege of being my daughter, right? Yeah. Because it happens. And someone comes to me and says, or my daughter comes to me and says, hey, mom, so-and-so is, you know, they're, they're, they're harassing me. Um, I thought, well, what would I do? Right. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it always comes down to this is that, you know what? I want my kids to be good people. Mm-hmm. You know, I hold my kids accountable. Mm-hmm. for everything that they do and I thought you know, what? I, you know I just I can't imagine that mm-hmm. that ruining someone else's life yeah because my you know because my kids are um you know I think as especially coming from my background I I feel like I'm I'm a super protective mom mm-hmm. I am an overly protective mom it's probably it's probably a little superfluous and my kids think it's annoying, but you know, we, especially our generation, you know, we don't want our kids to go through the shit that we went through. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, I don't know your past Alicia, but you know what? It's like, you're a Hispanic woman living in Texas. I can only imagine like the, you know, what the, the struggles that you've seen throughout your life. And, and it's, again, it's our generation. We don't want our kids to suffer. We want our kids right. to be better. We want better things for our kids. Yeah. So you know, it's like, I honestly would, I honestly would want my, you know, it's like, okay, well, are you, I would ask my daughter, are you doing your job? 
you know, I would make her show me that she is doing her job and that this is, it is indeed some sort of harassment. Mm-hmm. But that did not happen at all. It was just, yeah. it was just, and like I said, I don't even know if, if the general actually ordered anything, right? Or even just made a suggestion. I think it's just the fact that all of the officers, you know, my sen- the senior ranking officers in, in my state were all, he was their mentor. Uh-huh. So that's where I say his influence had everything to do with it. I don't even think he had anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. I think it was just like, oh, shit, she called her dad. Like, we better shut Crystal up. Yeah, yeah. So because then they look know. bad because then they don't look like like leaders, I guess, because they don't have you in check. And here I know, right? Complaining, and now he <laughs> finds out, and he's up here because he's our mentor, and blah blah blah. I mean, right. you no, know, they they probably give them God status. I don't know how that works out. I don't know what you know makes people think that the military lives worship. and breathes lives and breathes chain of command alicia yeah i get obvious i can see that wow yes yes Yes. i mean even when the whole vanessa guillen situation and they went to congress gosh just to convince some people for some really just simple changes in in uh, yeah. military policy and in in uh, in the way that they're reporting things, or if you're being harassed, they were asking for some simple changes. Like it didn't seem like they were asking for a lot. And even then, they had to like literally almost beg congressmen to listen. And even if they did listen, they listened with condescension and like, okay, you're you have five minutes in my office, and you know, get the fuck out. I hear you. It's not going to change. I'm not doing anything. My constituents don't want me to do shit about it. The military is up here and you're not going to do anything to, to, to disrupt that. Bye. I mean, that's the impression I got from watching the documentary. That was exactly why I got involved, Alicia, because I had the experience. I know what it's like to go up against these people. And I saw the way that they were treating the family and that shit pissed me off man oh man yeah and that's why I got so heavily involved because and I you know and that's why I I was so boisterous about my experience because I'm like no let me show you what happens because you know the family was demanding demanding a congressional investigation and I'm like let no 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 I was like wait hold up people let me tell you what happens during investigations it's all bullshit Mm -hmm. it's all bullshit Mm -hmm. because you can't investigate yourself you can't investigate yourself. No, when absolutely I filed, not. When I filed my DOD IG, complaint, I'm going to be innocent if I investigate myself. That's just, I know, right? We've what's investigated the, what's ourselves. The logic in that? <laughs> Where is the logic in that? I know. I can just see them now. We've investigated ourselves, and we've come to the conclusion that we did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have 1,600 pages of evidence, <laughs> it's, like, oh, I, it's insane. It's it's insanity. It's insanity. And this is why why veterans don't file complaints this is why why young women don't come forward this is why you know young men that you know experience harassment young women or or even at see i was a senior level yeah you know what i'm saying so that that was even i was just like blown away yeah because but i wanted that's that's why i got so heavily involved you know what i mean i'm like and my way of helping was sharing my experience. Like, let me tell you what it's like, because yeah, you're going to get a congressional investigation, but they're going to be allowed to investigate themselves. But with our voice, we were able to get that independent review. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it took all of us to do that. And that's insanity that we should, we should never have had to have do that. I've done that. We We should not have had to have done that. Excuse me. But um, so your GoFundMe account, what what is that gonna what what when we donate to your GoFundMe, how are we helping you? Tell tell my listeners because I want them to you know know how they can reach out and help you out as well. So on on my GoFundMe, um, I have in the actual like in my message, I have also there's a link directly to my attorney's office. So like if you because a lot of people. There's a lot, and I and I did this for a reason because there's you no know, there's a lot of like there's a lot of people scammers out there that create GoFundMe's and mm-hmm. like and then and then you find out like they're on vacation in the yeah. Bahamas uh-huh. and you know and because um, 
you know, like from the outside looking in, everybody thinks I'm like this rich, like live, live, lives this glamorous life. And it's like, no, I'm a single mom on VA disability. You know what I mean? And um, so I, I set up the GoFundMe, but I also have a direct link. There's a direct link in my GoFundMe that goes directly to my attorney. And it's a way to make a, you know, to, to contribute whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of support um, from a lot of organizations. LULAC is actually supporting me too. Um, so, um, so is Repatriate Our Patriots. Uh, they're an organization that helps deported veterans um, oh, wow. get, you know, get repatriate. So I've, 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 I've had a lot of support from even some organizations. Um, that in itself I, sounds so ridiculous. Like they're deported veterans. Yes. Like they just fought for the country, dude. You're yes. deporting their ass. Are you fucking serious right now? They well, just what the system. Ugh. What the system does, Alicia, is it it criminalizes our behavioral health. It's yeah. it's, it's our our mental health. They're criminalizing our mental health because it's kind of like they send you to war, right? And you go to war, you see some really horrible things. And it doesn't even have to be war. Moral injury in the military, I think, happens more in the workplace than it does on an operational. Because as service members, you know, we know what we're signing up for. We know that we are going to go to war. We know that we are possibly going to die. We sign up for that. Mm -hmm. You know, we raise our right hand and we swear an oath to the Constitution. But what we don't sign up for is we don't sign up to get killed by our own people you know what i mean yeah. like the fact the what happened to vanessa again it, it should disturb every single soul in this united states mm -hmm. because that young lady is part of one percent of people that raise their right hand and says you know what i'm gonna defend the nation and it takes a lot to do that so the fact that like i mean just the lack of respect mm -hmm. i mean like i told you the way they treated that family just it was it was absurd and um, I never got an opportunity to meet the family in person. Um, I went to DC when we initially had that big march, and <laughs> it was funny because I was actually standing right behind the, you know, Gloria again. I took my daughter, my at the time she was 18. I took her with me, and um, but you know what? It's like I wasn't there to to get like a thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was there because I'm a senior enlisted. Mm -hmm. Not commissioned officer. I mean, I, I'm I'm not in anymore. But like, you never stop serving. I yeah. will never stop serving. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like we are yeah. soldiers for life. Mm -hmm. That is our mantra. It's like, yeah, we retire, but like our service is not over. But I don't. Mean, but but isn't it crazy also that the only reason why she got any notoriety is because her sister and her mother made a fuss out of it and like sat and like they stood outside and they gathered people. And they were loud about it because otherwise, yeah. who pays attention to you? And and somebody yeah. called the news and then the news got involved and then they started talking to the news. Imagine if they would have been quiet and just waited at home for the military to do something. But that mom said, no, I'm not going to wait around for them to do anything. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to ask them, where is my daughter? Right? right. They would be waiting for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> like I am. <laughs> but like, but I how? Yeah stupid like she has to go through those lengths for somebody to go help her find her daughter where she says yeah. it i'm entrusting that you guys are going to be you know keeping her safe yep and she wasn't yep. and not only yep. that but so many other soldiers were found to to have died from that same place yeah like, where is it they what is found it? they found her? they found a male soldier yes, they did. looking they, for they were her looking for her yeah and they found another soldier. Yep, who had gone AWOL. Think there's a year ever going to be a time, a time when people are just not going to sign up for the military because they're just not going to want to go through this shit. Or do you think that the patriotism is always going to be ingrained in Americans and they're always going to sign up? Oh man, you know what? That's a hard one to answer because I can tell you that right now we do have a recruiting crisis. The military is hurting very bad for numbers, but also. You know, there's that patriotism there's but there's also that yeah oh yeah because we gas up the military right i mean you know yeah. and i'm very proud of my service mm -hmm. you know the military provides such amazing opportunities for people 
I mean, look at me. I came from poverty, from, you know, like high school dropout. And, you know, by 24 years old, I was working with NASA. You know what I'm saying? It's like the opportunities that I was afforded, I would never get that anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. So the military is such a great organization. It is such a phenomenal organization that provides opportunities that you will not get anywhere else. The camaraderie, you know, the bond that we have, you know, throughout this whole process, you know, it's like we have, you know, we call them battle buddies. You know, those are our brothers and sisters in arms. The bond that we have is so unique. And, you know, any any single one of my battle buddies can call me right now and be like, hey, I'm in trouble. And I'm like, where are you at? Yeah. No so matter where they're at. Is that? Yeah, yeah. So, gosh. So I, it, that's that that's a that's a double edged sword there. It is, yeah. It because has, I would not let my daughters join the military. Fuck no. Mm-hmm. Nope. My daughter wanted to join, and I'm just like, I love you too much. Mm-hmm. They don't deserve you. Mm-hmm. They don't deserve you because my you know my kids are very well mannered. My daughter's extremely kind, mm-hmm. and I'm like, nope, not my baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know what? My daughter now is going to college on my benefits. You know, she's she's going to college. She's a junior in college, going to school off of my dependent education assistance. Mm-hmm. And that means the world to me because, mm-hmm. you know, like it goes back to me telling you about how we don't want our kids to suffer the way we did. Yeah. And the fact that my daughter gets to reap the benefits of my service. The silver lining. You know, it is a silver lining. And, and all three of my kids will go to college for free. All oh. three of my kids. Yeah. Not just my oldest daughter. Um, my twins, they're in high school now. But when they go to college, they will also get my um, education assistance. So there's so many benefits, right? I mean, I have free health care for the rest of my life. And um, I have, you know, and I've also got the the camaraderie with my, with my brothers and sisters, man. Like, we're ride or dies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I love this organization. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's the legacy of my padrino. It's my legacy. It's, it means something. It means something to be a non-commissioned officer. It means something to be a soldier. And, you know, um, we have, we live by an oath and we mm-hmm. live by a creed and we have war, we, they're called war ethos. You know, I will not, you know, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. And I will never leave a fallen comrade. We live by that. Mm-hmm. That actually means something to us. And so to watch this, like self-destruction going on right now it's just it's so upsetting and um you know we recently like a year ago what we had the withdrawal from afghanistan and that created so much havoc in Mm -hmm. the veteran community Mm -hmm. because i'll give you an example um a very a very very good friend of mine the marine you know he shared his he uh we were just you know having a a real in-depth conversation about the withdrawal from Afghanistan and he was like what the fuck it uh, I saw how it affected him and he was so upset he was like you know how many people of my friends died you know in Marja you know back in you know when they were when they were deployed and he's like it was all for nothing and I mean devastated mm-hmm. and I saw the impact that it had on him and it how it it that shit hurt like mm-hmm. you feel it. And, you know, now it's just, you know, what I'm doing is I'm just giving a voice to those people and being the voice for everybody who is too morally injured to even say anything, you know, to the ones who have like, they were, they're just like, fuck it. There's no point. That's who I represent. I represent the enlisted core. I represent non-commissioned officers because, you know, you know why the non-commissioned officers were even developed? Back in like the 1700s, because um, there were not non-commissioned officers, but we were established to maintain good order and discipline. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, Alicia: if the if the non-commissioned officers are not allowed to do their jobs because you got officers overriding us and abusing their authority, mm-hmm. you're going to continue to have chaos. You're going to continue to have no good order and no discipline. Yeah. And where there's no discipline, there's no respect. And where there's no respect, that's where you're going to have assault and retaliation and all that shit just leads to chaos to chaos yeah and then ultimately it ends in suicide and overdoses alcoholism 
drug problems, violence. You got a lot of disgruntled veterans out there. I mean, we had we we saw firsthand last year, right? What happened? (laughs) Yeah. Friends, I want you to meet my favorite bilingual realtor, Elmer Garcia. You all know that a passion of mine is real estate investing, and having a great realtor by your side is essential. Elmer knows the city of Houston like the back of his hand, and not only is he highly regarded by his clients, but also by the professionals in his field. I can tell you from experience that he is attentive, trustworthy, thorough, and detail-oriented. He knows what I like, y'all, and seeks out opportunities for finding the right property for me. His services range from residential real estate to commercial and investment. He will guide you the entire way. I can tell you that. You can email him at elmerg.realtor at gmail.com or call him at 832-512-5752 or you can also find him on Instagram, elmergarcia underscore real estate. And don't forget, anything real estate is his forte. Do you find yourself at some at some point during your day or maybe during your weeks or your months where you're just like thinking, I'm just, I'm just giving up. I just can't keep going. It is too much. And, and not only because you mentioned moral injury, is it, is it damaging you more or is it giving you something to live for? Is it giving you a purpose? It's definitely besides your kids, obviously, because I know that's different, but yeah, no, it's it's career. definitely given me a new, it's given me a new purpose because I had a purpose mm-hmm. I very much had a purpose and that was taken away from me. So this, like I said, you know, I, in 2020 is June of 2020 is when I became a, I call myself a pain in the activist. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, I saw that. I'm and like, I, and, that's such a cool play on words. <laughs> yeah. And I have not put it down because it is my new purpose. and. I'm using my experience as, you know, as the blueprint and the foundation of, to which I do my work. And in fact, um, I'm, I'm speaking next, next, uh, in two weeks, mm-hmm. February 16th, I'm going to be speaking, um, to the West Point PAC NCOs that are currently in the Benavides Leadership Development Program. And that's in collaboration with Columbia University. So West Point has adopted my story as case study Uh for army corrosives. So, you know what? It's like, I feel like I am using my pain for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't all for nothing because I'm able now to educate. And that is so meaningful to me because that goes back full circle to my padrino. My padrino was an educator. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was a soldier first, but he was an educator. And, you know, fast forward to the to present time, you know, I will always be a soldier. No one will ever take that away from me ever. And, but now I'm an educator. I'm educating today's leaders on the impacts that their poor decisions can have on the organization and its people, mm-hmm. you know, and the importance of ethical integrity. So, um, I like what I do. Um, it is very heavy. And as I told you, I suffer from complex post-traumatic stress. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm just like all rainbows and butterflies and everything's great. No, I, I suffer from depression. I have days where I don't get out of bed. I have days where, you know, I'm just like, fuck this. I'm just, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I cry a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, because it is hard and it is, it's very heartbreaking, especially because of the way I'm treated when I'm asking for help. Right. Like I ask for help and it's like, Crystal, it's been 10 years. Like get over it. Drop it already. Like fucking let this shit go. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you're not my people. So I'm just going to remove you from my life because I don't need that because I will not give up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not much? fucking putting this down. So you're, you're looking to get your retirement back, right? Is that what you're fighting for? Okay. So how much yes. money do they owe you? But you know what? I don't even give a shit about the money, Alicia. For me, it's the principle because this is a leadership issue. Mm-hmm. 
And I was very passionate about being a leader. So that's what's important to me. Accountability is important to me. Yes, I want my my retirement because I'm not asking for anything that I did not earn. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's not my sole purpose for why I'm doing this. Nope. It's, we have a lesson to learn here because we have a serious problem. And when you have a serious problem, the best way to fix that problem is to study it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, going to be the sacrifice, the volunteer and the one taking one for the team. And it's like, here, (laughs) take my story and study it and let's fix this. Because we're not going to have any more Vanessa Gaines. Nope. We're not going to do that. We're not doing that shit no more. And, you know, I think it's up to the, us, uh, up to us non-commissioned officers to get shit back in line because, you know, we are the backbone of the, of the army. And so me stepping up, I don't, and, and people are like, oh, you were only in the National Guard. I don't give shit. I don't see you doing it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if not me, who? Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of advocates out there doing some really good work. Yeah. And, and um, it, 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 it takes all of goes, us. Goes back to the idea of, of if you don't get loud, you don't get heard. If you yeah. don't put yourself out there like Vanessa's family did, like they they screamed it to the to the four corners. They stood outside and said, I we need answers. Like somebody needs to tell us something. You won't be heard. You won't be heard. You won't, nobody will know your story or what's really going on if you don't put yeah. if somebody doesn't put yourself out there like you said you're like the sacrificial lamb you're putting yourself out there so that you can learn and then the next person that comes around will know the lessons take those yeah. lessons and incorporate them and implement them in a way that's probably going to be even more useful and faster and more i don't know i mean i think i think young people right now are really at a point where they're very much committed to 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 justice to learning about injustice like my kid my sons like they're so aware of all the things that are going on and I think when I was growing up I don't think I paid attention to to much of that but they know I mean they know everything that's going on now and like they're very like consumed by you know not not repeating stupid mistakes and not doing the things yeah. that that you know so many of us just sort of see and like think well that's just going to happen well that's just how it is it's just the status quo. And they're like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. It it doesn't. And you know what, Alicia, you know what I, you know what I'm really trying to do and what I'm like, what my, what like, I'm cause I'm, I'm just like, I've been doing this for 10 years. Right. And I've been trying to do this on my own. And obviously I've gotten nowhere. (laughs) Yeah. So now I have, um, yeah, absolutely swallowed my pride. Cause I'm very stubborn. Like, you know, I'm not one to ask for help, but I'm like, nope. I, I, I see that I cannot fight this on my own. I mm-hmm. do need help. And I, you know, I started my GoFundMe. I've been putting myself out there, been very boisterous on my LinkedIn. But what I really want, and maybe this is where you count me out, is I'm trying to get, I've, I've even written to Jennifer Lopez. I'm trying to get in touch with Jennifer Lopez mm-hmm. because, you know, recently she did a documentary, Halftime. Yeah. Oh, man. And I, I, I've watched it like 15 times. Mm-hmm. I have admired Jennifer Lopez since I was. 12 years old Mm -hmm. (laughs) and fun fact she calls her her twins coconuts and that's what I call my twins I'm like hey Mm -hmm. are you like you got that for me (laughs) my twins twins are are older yeah born in December and hers were born in February I'm just like hey maybe it's fate but I'm trying to you know I want her help because in her documentary she looks in the camera and she says I want every little girl to know you know, that you never back down to bringing light to an injustice. And I'm just like, that's, that's it. it. That's what I'm doing. That's it. So yeah. I've, I've tagged her on stuff. I wrote to her. I wrote to her company. I've done like all that. Of course, you know, like I'm sure there's a bazillion people that write to her, mm-hmm. but you know, social media is the way of the future. I've, I've seen the power that it has. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I need to get in front of her. I need yeah. to get in front of her because I need to tell her my story and I need and I need her help because one, she knows how to battle the game, the system. Yeah. You know, she's she's been battling it her her whole life. You know, and her her documentary was so close to home for me because I'm yeah. just like, holy shit! Like, you no, know, it shows. I how, get it. How much she fights against the the oh my gosh, yeah, powers that be, yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's dealing with, you know, she she deals with it like on a you know on a different, a whole different aspect of things. But you know, it's kind of like um, you know, well, let's 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 put some let's we're let's battling it of ways of like getting you in front of in front of that and like Yep. I need her help. I need her help and maybe she can help fund my retainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, even so, if it's not especially... Jennifer, maybe somebody else will 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 jump in for you too. I mean, yeah, I really like, want Jennifer though. Like Eva Longoria is someone that does a lot of work in the community too, and she's kind of. I want all in. of them. Yeah, Alicia, I want all yeah. of them. Okay, let's get them all. Like a band of women. Yeah, we're absolutely. putting it out in the I universe. Want we're manifesting it right now. We're saying it to the yep. world. We need y'all. We need y'all to come. Yeah, to we do. Us. Yep. I need you, Jennifer. I need you, Eva. I need you, Salma. All of you. Oprah. Hell, Meghan Markle. She's look at what Meghan Markle's dealing with. God bless. Oh I'm my like, gosh, I just finished the book, the the uh, Harry's book, and I'm thinking, no wonder they left so fast. I mean, they I, I mean, adore them. lasted too damn long in Britain after the harassment. I mean, he goes in like seriously in on like all the things that they used to say to them and the harassment they faced. And the royal yep. family did nothing for them. They never even like tried to help or put yeah. something out for them and support nothing. It was like they were on their own. Sad. I know. It, it it hurts. It hurts deeply when your own people are the ones that are, I mean, trying to kill you. You know what I mean? Like I would have died by suicide. And my you know I'm, i could just imagine it's like what what were you going to say at my funeral how great i was how amazing i was what a great leader i was when you put me there yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and so the you know there's brave people out there that have that display personal courage and megan and harry are they're one they're just one of they're two of many right mm -hmm. but I admire them. I, I, and you know what, that's the kind of stuff that inspires me to keep going and keep doing what I'm doing. Because what I now is I now have the courage to be disliked because there's a lot of people that just want me to go away. They're just like, Crystal, get over it. Yeah. It was 10 years ago, whatever. You know I mean? I don't, don't think I don't hear that all the time. And I'm just like, you know, what? I don't have time for that energy. I only have time for the hell. Yeah. I want to, I want to support you. Um, that's the energy. Yeah. that I that I'm welcoming into my life I'm welcoming you know the the how can I help what can we do yeah you no know? that's that's exactly how I feel I feel like what can I do what can I help where can I jump in and share something on my platform or share something with someone that could know somebody that could know somebody that could help that could get to somebody I mean you yeah. never know if you don't talk about it if you don't put it out there nobody's gonna know so yeah I'm going to end it now because we're done with the Zoom. The Zoom is telling me it's got only like a minute left. <laughs> okay. But I feel like we could like talk for hours, Crystal. And I really appreciate you sharing your story with me, sharing your story, your background with my listeners, with the people out there. Um, believe me, when I post this, I'm going to have, I'm just, I, I'm just definitely going to do calls to action and definitely ask everyone to type in and jump in and help you out as much as you can because, um, I feel like, you know, if we don't help each other and we don't support each other, who's going to do it for us, right? We have to be the example yeah. and, and, walk, and walk the talk. Don't just talk about it, be about it, and, like, go and do it. Like, don't just say, oh, yeah, I like it. I'm, yeah, I'll support you. And then they never do. They, they go home, they forget about you, and they never do. They don't ever go to their computer, get on that link, and send some money. It, and I right. see it all the time. But definitely, right. I want, you know, my group, my people to just, go out there and just support thank you so much thank for you so thank you i i appreciate you sincerely and it was great meeting you too yes <laughs> yes yes and let's keep, let's like, keep going so i'm gonna go back to do some uh, more conferences at poshmark so i hope to see you there oh girl i'll be there 10 years strong <laughs> we'll talk about yeah. posh, poshing next time okay okay all right thank you so much alicia thanks you too take care bye-bye you too thank you bye-bye